Well, this is it, the top performing stock of 2021 on the NASDAQ. If you haven't heard of Lusa Group, you will, because they aim to be a major player in the luxury electric car market. And they've sold out their first offering, the stock market regarding Lucid with a startling 200% gain in 2021. Welcome back. Each week, we devote time to exploring stock opportunities for 2022. And to help us today, we're joined by Melissa Armo. She's CEO and founder of The Stock Swoosh. We're also joined by our friend, business and market analyst, Seth Denson, also a Newsmax column, columnist. Thanks for being here. Let's start by getting a sense of where stocks are right now. Is this even a time to be thinking about moving money into investments? Melissa, I'm going to start with you and also talk about your first pick, Kroger. Well, I think right now the market has started out this year, 2022, a little bit bearish. It, we've fallen off the first week of the year, and that's not really a great sign. It doesn't mean the market is going to break trend in 2022. It does mean, however, people should be aware we could have a volatile year, whereas 2020, after the COVID low, we rallied, and then we rallied all of 2021. So it was really easy to make money if you were long stocks, even stocks that really were in downtrends in 2021. You could have gone long and made money. This year, you better know what you're doing if you want to put money into the market. Well, and Kroger is a recession-proof stock because everybody's buying groceries whether there's a recession or not. So that's probably a great pick. Seth, let's go to you. CRISPR, that's your pick. Give us a little background yeah. on that. Well, a couple of things. Obviously, anything related to healthcare is near and dear to my heart. Uh, but specifically with this company, we're talking about genetic editing and their capabilities. If you look at the stock and what it was a year ago, it was $200. Today, it's around the $70 mark. And most people would go, uh oh, it's going down. But they've got new technology specifically around sickle cell treatment. And I think that could be really powerful. I think the stock is, is ready to go up. Uh, and I think that could serve also their technology uh, as a pipeline for potential oncology treatment. So I think this is a good buy. I think there's some good opportunity there. Okay, that's great. What a great choice. Uh, Melissa, Tesla and Walmart, what do you have about those? Well, Walmart I like because we've been in an inflationary period and you can buy a lot of things at low cost at Walmart. Also, they still have the brick and mortar stores and people love to go in and you can pretty much get anything that you want and anything that you need at Walmart. They even sell food now. So I think people are going to be looking for bargains and discounts. And the stock actually rallied Friday when the market was falling. So this stock is strong. Look for it to continue higher. Look for it to probably have good earnings the first quarter of 2022, which is in a few weeks. And Tesla, well, everyone loves Tesla. I mean, Tesla has been a beast. Just when you think Tesla can't go any higher, it does. It went over 1,000 in 2021. I wouldn't even put it past the stock at some point getting to 2,000 if it doesn't split before there. Elon Musk wants to take on the entire world, and there's nothing stopping that stock and nothing stopping that company, in my opinion. Well, everybody's buying into it. Seth, you've got two picks. You've got Visa and you've got General Motors. Do you want to make a comment on those? Yeah, listen, I, I agree with Melissa on Tesla. GM's a tenth of the overall value, but I think it's poised. And I'll tell you, a lot of analysts have pulled back from GM, but I think as the market starts to reopen, we get this chip shortage under control. They're now, they've are now they announced their new electric Silverado. I think that they, you know, them having a minority share in GMAC from a financial perspective, I think there's a lot of things well. And GM used to pay a dividend. I'm a big fan of stocks that do that. I always say you don't own an asset until you sell it or you get a dividend from it. I think it's poised to do well in the new year. The the other one, Visa, hey, it's everywhere you want to be and it's everywhere I want to be. They processed over $13 trillion in transactions. Sure. Uh, and there's not competition in that space. They are the, the leader. And if crypto starts taking off, they're aligning themselves to be in line with crypto. So I really like what they have potential to do in the new year. In our last few seconds, one of my picks was GE. Do you think the breakup's going to increase value to both of you? Will there be a great breakup value or not? Melissa? Ladies first. Go ahead. Well, if the market if the market continues to rally, then that will rally as well. But again, if we have a big sell-off in the market, that's going to go in a downward direction. So I would wait on that. Wait until after the earnings to buy that. Just a couple moments. I, Go ahead, Seth. Yeah, I really like this move from GE. If you look at what their stock has done over the last decade, it was time to do a shakeup. This is a good one, breaking off those components and letting them try to fly on their own. I think it's a good move. I'm watching this in 2022 as well. Seth, Melissa, thanks for your picks for 2022. And stick around because after this 30-second break, we'll be right back with big predictions for the year ahead.
the former president of the United States. And, you know, I wouldn't say Fox has been exactly perfect. Fox has been a big difference of Fox between now and what it was four years ago, as you know. But we have others that come along and they're doing well. And uh, uh, Newsmax has been really good. And, you know, others are coming along. And people are seeing that they're watching these conservative networks. President Trump is right. That's why millions of Americans are tuning into Newsmax for the real news they can trust. Prediction time. What are going to be the big financial market stock stories of 2022? With me again to offer up their thoughts are Melissa Armo and Seth Denson. Melissa, let's start with you. Inflation will get worse, not better. Give me your thoughts on that. I definitely think inflation is going to increase. And, and I'm disagreeing with uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell because he said he thought in December that in 12 months from now, we'd be back to normal levels of inflation. He's trying to curb that by raising interest rates. They're going to raise rates this year. But that's going to put more of a strain on people's pocketbooks, in my opinion. And the problem with inflation really is not necessarily tied to rates. It's tied to the fact that we have a labor shortage. There's too many job openings. People are not at work. And so, of course, we can't produce the goods and services and get them out around the country fast enough. So that is why costs are increasing. I think it's going to get much, much worse before it gets better, not just for food, but for things like gas as well. Well, inflation impacts everybody significantly. Seth, you mentioned black swan events that aren't priced into the market. Give us a couple of examples of what you mean by that. Yeah, I really think that there's so much potential out there for some ge geopolitical unrest. You've got 150,000 troops uh, that Russia's put right off of Ukraine. Whether or not they invade, I don't know, but I do think they're going to use that as leverage regardless against the global economy. I think it's going to impact stocks. You have China and Taiwan. You have Turkey and the EU. The, things are just primed. Listen, my faith teaches me that we should fear God. Well, guess what? The global economy understands you should fear America. That fear isn't there anymore, and I think there's a lot of big power players out there that are ready to leverage that this year. And I'm worried about what that might do to the markets if they act on it. Well, those are great comments and that gives our investors a lot to think about when they make their own investing decisions. Well, we've reached the end of our first program. We hope you've enjoyed it and look forward to our next edition. This is a Wall Street World. I'm Scott Carter. See you soon.